Hey guys, it's been quite a while since I've made any content for this channel again, and uh, I unfortunately am still very preoccupied with all my usual projects and things of that nature, so I don't really anticipate having a whole lot of content here in the foreseeable future. I do plan on getting that, this channel back into full swing, but for now it's just sort of intermittent videos like this. But this is one particular item which I've been lucky enough to obtain a sample of just on loan for study, but I feel like it's... Uh, there's not a whole lot out there on these, and in fact, most people don't even know about them, so I figure I'd just kind of insert my own take on it to kind of put it into the zeitgeist, see if we can't learn a little bit more collectively about these. So what we have here is something that's probably pretty familiar to those of us that collect Delta Force equipment, and this is a IR strobe patch. It's quite literally a US flag patch with a IR strobe chip inside. Uh, that is its only purpose and function. There's nothing too particularly special about it, and it seems like it's something that, you know, it's kind of an off-the-shelf commercial item. Uh, and it very well may be so. I, there's, unfortunately, a, an astounding lack of context to where these came from. To this day, we do not know of a lone manufacturer who made these where they came from. Uh, all that is known is that they are pretty much indigenous to the unit, and they can be seen popping up around... Uh, I want to say maybe 2004 at the earliest and kind of recycled into just before the 2010s. They didn't last too long in the unit. They sort of floated around through most of early GWAT and they kind of faded away without really being noticed. So there, there are a couple different, um, well, no, there aren't. There, there's basically one version of this strobe, but there's two different, uh, there's an option for a left or a right facing flag, depending on what side of the uniform you're wearing it on. But that's to be expected with most US flag patches. Anywho, uh, there aren't any other sub variants of these. And as far as the construction, the materials go, it's a little bit of a mystery to me. And I'm going to break down the details for you because I really don't have a whole lot of history or further information on these. So again, if you have any knowledge about where these came from, who made them, etc., cetera, um, feel free to leave, drop a comment. Uh, coming to contact me. I plan on making reproductions of these eventually, but finding the uh, exact materials that these used has proven to be quite a foreboding task, to say the least. So let's get right into the details of what this thing is about. Starting with the patch itself, you can see that this is the uh, right-facing flag, which was meant to go on the right shoulder of whatever uniform you're wearing. Obviously, Delta would have had a variety of uniforms throughout the period these were used, be it modified BDUs, Cry AC combat, or uh, field shirts, etc. So, obviously, it is a plastic material with a U.S. flag silk screen onto it. There is a very thin uh, trim here along the edges to prevent any fraying. Uh, on the back, it is entirely Velcro. And taking a closer look, you can see that there are two separate layers, one for the Velcro and one for the actual patch itself, or the actual um, flag. And you can see at one side, there is some Velcro that, these, that allows it to open up and insert the IR strobe into the actual pouch itself. Uh, one thing that you may notice is that this material is, uh, I don't know how well it's going to show up on camera, but it is partially see-through on one side. There we go, you can really see it now. So you can see through the material on this side, but not on this side, or not very well at least. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what material this is. Initially there was a bit of discussion theorizing that this is standard 3M scotch light glint tape, like you see on a lot of um, Delta modified BDUs and helmet covers and things of that nature. Uh, but this is not scotch light material. This is something entirely different. I haven't quite pinpointed what it is, as I've said, all I know is that it is a silvery reflective material, which again is see-through through one side, but not through the other. And um, if you look very closely at it, I don't know, again, if it's going to show up that well on camera, there are very, very small, almost like micro prisms. I don't know if that's actually what they are, or if it's just the weave of the, whatever material this is, assuming it's a fabric. Um, but that's basically what it's constituted of. And now there's two layers of vinyl on either side of it. I assume it's vinyl, some sort of plastic, obviously. Uh, I don't know the thickness or gauge of the plastic compared to the material itself. Uh, I don't really have a set of calipers that can get in between there and measure that, you know, bordered with all this Velcro and stuff. So uh, I'll figure that out at a later point. And then on the other side of it, the, the Velcro side of it, there is this sort of um, silvery um, 
material here it almost reminds me of the material that you see on the inside of like like lunch boxes and things like that so i'm not entirely sure what to call this maybe it's um fake leather i'm, I'm not entirely sure so it's just the sort of uh gray colored plastic film material again similar to the stuff insulating the inside of most lunch boxes nowadays um there is very few mil spec materials on this uh i Maybe the Velcro is mil spec, but as far as everything else, again, I don't, I haven't identified this reflective material. The trim is also non spec. Um, if you get the camera zoom in on that, you can see that this is not 5038 type three gross grain, like what's used on a lot of um, military tactical products and things like that. This is sort of a very odd um, woven or knit uh, tr uh, bias tape, as you would call it. I believe it's half inch i could be wrong on that it may be close it's sort of closer to one or excuse me three eighths of an inch wide but and it may also be double folded so i'm not entirely sure what this tape is i mean that's another thing i'm trying to figure out uh, but i haven't found an exact match to it in terms of this uh this nylon sort of this woven nylon material so that's another thing if you if you have any knowledge about that feel free to point it out to me but again this is as far as I'm aware, off the shelf commercial stuff that they use, that this isn't mil spec, uh, as far as I'm aware. So uh, that's that's been one of the reasons why reproductions of these patches have uh, not really come about. I do know that the Japanese, uh, some Japanese company, made a small batch of reproductions of these a long time ago, um, but they were not released outside of the country, and I, I they're pretty easy to tell apart from an original just based on the materials used. I mean, for instance, the the fabric, uh, the, the, the reflective material is a pretty obvious giveaway, but uh, I'll leave it at that. And then there's not too much to mention about the IR strobe itself. Um, so uh, you have this chip here, which you have a little label over the switch, uh, which you would remove before use. Uh, kind of gives you a brief bit of instruction. Well, not really, just says remove before use, essentially. Uh, this little switch inside here, you can see you have a function for the... For a strobe, I don't know if the camera's going to pick that up, but there is an infrared strobe. And then flipping it to the opposite direction, it is just a constant on for the IR light. Uh, it's, it runs off of a single button cell battery. I haven't pulled it out to know what type it is, but it's a pretty common off-the-shelf battery, I would assume. So it is replaceable. Um, these two tabs coming off of the edges here they do not seem to serve any sort of electrical purpose they just seem to be there to hold the uh the light diffuser in place at least that's what i assume this thing is here which originally was sort of epoxied on but the epoxy is kind of all degraded and worn off so it's kind of fallen off unfortunately but it's all intact otherwise um an interesting detail here is that you may notice that there are three sections for potential leds even though there's only one le uh, infrared led on the strobe uh, uh, PCBs, there theoretically could have been a three LED model, although I've never seen one like that. All of the, all the examples I've seen have always been single LED, but uh, I digress. So I don't really know what else to make about this. It's a very flexible light diffuser. I believe it's probably some sort of silicone or something like that. Uh, it, it almost looks like it was cut out of something else. I'm not entirely sure what, but you can see that the uh, the cut is very crude. It seems like this was originally some sort of professionally molded product just based off of the LED pocket here, but then it was just kind of cut down to size to work with these uh, strobe patches. So I'm not entirely sure of the origins of these um, uh, these IR strobes, but if I were to make replicas of these patches, I do know that there are a, uh, a small variety of like modern day IR strobe chips that I could use. So I probably wouldn't go through the effort of replicating this per se. Um, although I'll give you a closer look at all the circuits and stuff like that, get all the markings. I've tried looking up this uh, part number on the PCB. I've gotten no results for it. You may have better luck, but um, anyways. So yeah, that's basically all there is to it. Uh, I don't, I'm don't. i not really an electrical whiz. So if you guys, you guys probably would know, some of you guys would probably know more about this than I would. But really, that's all there is to say. Again, I'm hoping that eventually either me or maybe even somebody else through the help of this video could make reproductions of these. Uh, I'm definitely trying to do my research on them. But as far as when or, you know, 
I, I have no idea, honestly. It's still kind of up in the air, and I'm still trying to figure things out about these. But uh, hopefully, if nothing else, it gave, gave you a uh, closer look at a very elusive and rare strobe patch, which has been seen plenty of times in use by the Delta Force throughout the early 2000s. So if you have any comments, questions, corrections, or concerns, as always, drop them in the comments below, and I will see you guys later.